welcome to Equal Entertainment. I'm Tracy E. Gilchrist. Ricky Martin and husband Juan Yosef are officially ending their relationship. The two released a joint statement on Instagram saying they'll continue to co-parent their four children together. Martin and Yosef married in 2017 after first connecting in 2015. Meanwhile, Ricky Martin is set to star in the Apple TV Plus comedy Palm Royale and later this year will join the trilogy tour with Pitbull and Enrique Iglesias. Jay-Z's mother, Gloria Carter, and her longtime partner, Roxanne Wiltshire, have tied the knot in a star-studded celebration. According to People magazine, Beyonce took a break from her world tour for the wedding. Kelly Rowland, Robin Roberts, Tyler Perry, and Tina Knowles Lawson were also among the guests. Gloria revealed her sexual identity publicly on Jay-Z's 2017 track, Smile, where she said, love who you love because life isn't guaranteed. Daniel Radcliffe will not appear in the upcoming Harry Potter TV series. In an interview with Access Hollywood Monday, the actor says he hasn't had any discussions about appearing on the series, but he says he's excited to see what other people do with it. Radcliffe portrayed Harry Potter in the films based on author J.K. Rowling's best-selling book series. The new show will be produced by Warner Brothers and Max. The studio says the new show will be a, quote, faithful adaptation of Rowling's book series. Folk music legend and songwriter Bob Dylan reportedly wrote some notes for the man directing the new movie about his life. Filmmaker James Mangold recently appeared on a podcast and shared that the film A Complete Unknown has the full support from the music icon. Mangold also clarified that the movie shouldn't be considered a Bob Dylan biopic, saying that Dylan has been so supportive in making it because it focuses on a specific point in his life. The film is set to begin filming next month, with Timothy Chalamet starring as Dylan. Dylan will be doing his own singing in the movie. He's also an executive producer on the film. Nimona marches to the beat of their own drum. The shape-shifting, comfortable, in their own skin, monster, creature, girl, is a surprise summer hit. Nimona turns the traditional hero, villain, damsel storyline on its head. I spoke with stars Chloe Grace Moretz and Eugene Lee Yang about the social impact that Nimona could have and how it touches on queer visibility and representation. And I think the fact that Nimona is a shapeshifter, kind of says it all. You know, Nimona is so fluid in 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 who she is. You know, she presents herself as, you know, kind of like, you know, young woman, but she's neither woman nor male nor rhinoceros nor shark nor you know bird in the sky. She is exactly who she wants to be, which is just Nimona. Um, you know, this is a story about acceptance, about self love, about accepting those, uh, uh, you know, other than yourself for exactly who they are and who they want to be. Um, all the while being really fun and super silly and kind of wild. I don't want to give away the story, but it is also the story of what happens when people fear the other, fear something they don't understand. And I read this very much as an allegory for what is happening to, especially for to trans people in this country where trans people are de being demonized. And I find this to be such an important beautiful story uh, that you're telling. And would, would you talk about that a little bit, a little deeper? Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think this is a story that, you know, really does represent so many things that are going on in our world right now. I think even the landscape of the the film, I mean, you look at it, it's a medieval society that seems to be updated, but it's medieval with these medieval archetypes. And when you look at our society, you know, we are in the future right now. We're in, don't have flying cars, but we're near to it. And we're living in a world that has really medieval archetypes, you know, that that have archaic ideals that are demonizing, villainizing, and harming, you know, countless people across America and across the world. Um, and I think that this is a, a a movie that encapsulates all of that in such a beautiful way, um, and in such a pure way. Uh, and I really think it's a story that can save a lot of lives. If I'm being honest, I mean, I think that. I felt really seen by this project when I was able to finally see it recently. Um, but I also feel like for people that don't understand what it's like to be in the community, it is going to help people understand that in the way that is so true. Um, in that they just are exactly who they are in such a pure, pure sense of that. Um, so yeah, there's, a mil I mean, I could talk about it for a million hours, to be yeah. honest. What really stands out to me is there's this beautiful love story at the core, a queer love story, and uh, there's not a big deal made of it. It's just a part of who these these knights, these heroes are. And would you talk a little bit about 
what that means to you to be a part of this project that that is showing yeah. that story. It's so incredible. And I think, you know, this is us speaking like from a queer perspective. It's the refreshing aspect is one, the film has a lot of heart. There's some moments that really get you in the gut, but like we also deserve films that are kind of goofy and funny and action packed. And it, it's such an engaging watch. And the aspect of um, Ambrosius and Ballister's relationship, um, you know, I'm in my 30s and I've been in a long relationship. And what's kind of wonderful is it's not the classic, like they have crushes and will they, won't they get together? And it's not something where it's, oh, we have to like get through this entire narrative to for someone to finally come out with their identity all valid stories. But in this, the way I've described it is that it's uh, it's two boyfriends who are going through a really shitty time, like a bad <laughs> run. That is highly relatable. They also cast queer and trans people across the board. And what does it mean to you that they took that kind of care to ensure that people were represented behind the work as well? I mean, I think it's really important. You know, Nick and Troy are two of the most accepting people I've ever met. I mean, they are so kind and such good guys. And, you know, they had the opportunity to cast anybody in this, to be fair. Yeah. Um, and for them to cast people that uh, actively represent the characters, you know, people that are in the community and, and see themselves as queer and LGBTQ, um, that is all you can ask for it's all I can ask for and to uh be able to represent in this movie and feel represented that is you know huge I want to reiterate there's so much joy and, and fun in this film as well but it's also this really moving story of the outsider and demonizing someone that you don't understand which is happening right now politically to mm. LGBTQ plus especially trans people and yeah. I wonder, would you talk about the importance of showing that? I, it, it's really remarkable. It's so important. I also love like, you know, ND, this is his story. And so it's already in the DNA of the, the world and the characters that, that it's speaking to queerness. Nimona herself is gender non-conforming and this, but always proud of it. She's never oh. not herself. And that's the thing is that she struggles because everyone else in this oppressive society is labeling her as this monster. And for part of the film's climax to recognize that all she really needed was for someone to tell her, I see you. Mm. It's a it's a matter of, it could be potentially life-saving. And that's something that I think is so, that's what gets me verklempt. I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> my emotions. But it's also true because it hits the heart of what's happening in places like our country right now. We are forgetting that these political pawns that are being used and this scapegoating, which has been like tried and true by certain groups since, you know, the first time they saw a queer person, like we'll use this as a distraction. It's affecting real life people and it's affecting real life children. And I think that's the big thing is sometimes like, maybe we should just focus on the fact that sometimes you just need to recognize that these people need to be seen, whether it's by a parent, whether it's by a stranger or whether it's by an animated film. And I think that's what's so beautiful about Nimona. Nimona is streaming now on Netflix. Coco Lee, the iconic Hong Kong singer and voice actress died Wednesday, days after attempting to die by suicide. According to a social media post from her sisters, the 48-year-old, who'd suffered from depression, attempted to die by suicide on Sunday. In Lee's last Instagram post, dated December 31st, 2022, she said it had been an incredibly difficult year, but urged her followers to stay positive and spread love. Lee gained global stardom for her work on Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. She was also hired to voice the character of Mulan in the Mandarin version of the Disney classic in 1998. No matter why you need support, the 988 Lifeline is there for you. 988 provides free confidential mental health support anytime, day or night. If someone you know has been talking about suicide, keep calm but take it seriously. Call or text 988-CHAT-988-LIFELINE.ORG. You can watch the Advocate channel live by downloading our app in the Apple or Google Play Store. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel. For the Advocate channel, I'm Tracy E. Gilchrist, and thank you for watching.